given the opportunity to drive a 530 brake horsepower GTI makes sense. Ludicrous, but makes sense. Having already driven a Stage 3 S3 and an R puts me in a good place to understand more about how capable or potentially impractical this car actually is. At Stage 3 levels, this car is not just against other Stage 3 cars though, or arguably a progression from Stage 2 to Stage 3. It's elevated to be compared against its bigger brother, the Golf R, Stepsister S3, probably more attractive, Stepsister RS3 as well. <laughs> Before that though, in true scientific style, I wanted a control test, a benchmark if you like, as to what the original car felt like. I personally owned a Mark V GTI Edition 30 and was excited to drive a manual GTI again. You would think that the Mark 7 would be leaps and bounds in front of a 2007 car. The test car was basically brand new and the engine hadn't really loosened up properly, but the only standout feature of the car was also its Achilles heel. The gearbox felt smooth and tight. There will always be a rewarding feeling for getting the gears right in a manual car. However, there is no comparison against a DSG car. A manual car was all we were able to get our hands on though. Unfortunately, certainly for me, the whole experience with a standard GTI left me feeling underwhelmed and flat. Not something I felt driving a standard Golf R recently. Okay, fine. So, done the Golf R APR Stage 3 car, done the Audi S3 Stage 3 car, it had only seemed right to do the Golf GTI Stage 3. I was fortunate, as you've probably seen just a moment ago, to have a standard GTI. Just as a comparison, I knew this car was coming, I knew that I would be able to you know, review this car, but it's really, really difficult, I think, as I found with the S3, to understand exactly what difference the actual stage three makes if you've not driven a standard car most people who get stage three kits whether you know you you, you, you go from APR or somewhere else will inevitably have at least done stage one they might do stage two probably would have done stage two because all the hope components and hardware from stage two is needed in order to get the stage three kit but having never driven a GTI before it was really really good to understand so where do we sit with this car? Funny thing, with the traction control on, this car picks up speed like you would not believe. It just goes. You can hear the crack. It's not a pop, it's not a it's not a DSG fart. This is a DSG car, although the, the GTI which I was in you know a couple of days ago that was manual. It's not a DSG fart as such. It's a crack. I like that. checking the GTI out. You inevitably do that. I, I, I've got far, I look at the golf R's, it's just one of those things that you do. Anyway. So how does this stack up? How does it stack up compared to the other two cars? Well, inevitably, you know, if you've watched the other couple of videos, I thought of S3 whilst it was capable, whilst it went, you know, I, I'm by no means, you know, a journalistic, petrol head, I'm just an amateur and an enthusiast, but the narrative of well, the Audi S3 or the Audi cars feels slightly numb. I didn't think it felt numb until I'd driven a Golf R stage 3 kit and then it felt, yeah, lethargic is the word that I'd use. Potent, but slightly lethargic, just in the, the feel, but that was compromised, or the compromise to that was the fact that it felt like silk on the road. You know, you go over bumps, and you've just been over a bump there, and the S3, that just soaks it up. It's just, you know, a joy to drive. Next, the Golf R. 
but that felt really, really sharp in comparison. That was twinkle toeing. This GTI, it feels like a wild animal. You twitch that traction control off. If you're not paying attention, you are going to crash. You are, I'm not necessarily talking just about understeer, I'm just talking about, you know, general day-to-day -day driving. This is a daily driver. This is a car which is used every single day. And on the front, it's got two four fives. Now that's more than the standard GTI. I think the standard GTI has got two two fives on. And you know, it, it you can feel the difference. You know, even from the little comparison that I've done, you can feel the difference. Whether I want to have this as my daily driver. Well pottering about. I think you'd be hard pressed to to know that it was a stage three car. Obviously the you know the induction sounds and the horses and the turbo spool and the cracks, you know, they give it away a little bit. But it's not that much different. If you just pot it about, it's not that much different. As soon as you open that throttle though, boy, this car is burning. Switch the traction control off, shall we? Spin. Spin. Can you feel that? Spin. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Let's turn the traction control on and let's see what difference that makes. If you can pick this up on the camera, I know the keen enthusiast of you will be. Much more composed. There's no torque steer. No torque steer at all. There is no slipping. Perfect. Perfect. That's where the smoothness comes in. That's where the, you know, it still felt alive, but it just didn't feel like I was skirting all over the road there. I suppose in some respects, you need more, more ability to drive a car like this than you do in a golf car. A golf car, planted, you go around the corner, you take the traction control off, it's never really off, it, it's still there. This, you turn the traction control off, you know, you saw it there, I don't know if you could see properly, but you know, we were moving about the road there a little bit. As soon as I pushed it back on, no problem. I suspect this would have been with the traction control on, still spinning. I suspect if this review was in the wet, we would be having a very different review, very, very different review. Whereas, you know, arguably the Golf R would be more composed. No problem. So what else can I tell you about the GTI? Well, you know, I don't want to make this, I don't want to make my channel, I don't want to make these reviews into a, you know, well, this is the Golf R, look at the cubby space, look at the DSG box, and you know, whatever else. This is specifically about the tune. This is the stuff that I wanted to know when I was looking on YouTube to understand more. Well, is a DSG car, stage three, is it worth it? Well, if you've got the money, Christ. You know, I'd recommend, if you can, getting into a stage three car to, to have a feel for yourself, just exactly what this is. You know, this is, this is raw power. I didn't even take it past 6,000 RPM. You know, there's still a little bit more in there. And arguably, at the top end, that's where the, that's where the real power comes in. <sighs> it's really difficult not to like this car. Inevitably, I don't think it's gonna be for everyone, but for those who do, I genuinely think that it's gonna be one of the most rewarding packages that's out there. Thanks for checking the video out. If you like what you've seen, hit subscribe or leave a comment in the comment section. I promise I will try and get back to you. Thanks very much.